Welcome to Recast, presented by the Baptist Union of Scotland. Each episode will look at a key issue of mission or discipleship for church leaders in Scotland. We will be bringing you key voices, practical insights and unique stories, all focused on the church in Scotland. Welcome to the Recast. My name's Glenn Innes and I don't have my co-host Lisa with me today, but that's because these are just a series of little short mini pods where we're going to interview some people who are doing fascinating and interesting things uh, in the areas of mission and discipleship around our nation. We hope you enjoy. Well, I'm delighted today to have John McKinnon with me. Uh, uh, John, uh, thanks so much for taking the time to join us. Good afternoon, Glenn. Good to be with you. It's great. Uh I mean, people won't know this, but and, and I don't know if you even remember this, but you, you have a really big part of my my Christian story. I you uh, came to Aberdeen uh, about I would guess within a year of me having become a Christian uh, to uh, a part of uh, to an event that we ran up there. Yeah, the I do called, remember it well. The event was called Sunrise. That's absolutely right. Yeah, so we uh, and uh, your your passion for evangelism was definitely something that uh, stirred in me and a number of my friends at the mm. time, and I, I think many of us have kept it. But lots of people won't know who you are, John. So I wonder, would you just take a couple of minutes and tell us who John McKinnon is? Yeah, certainly. And with that, Glenn's made me sound like the really old guy, but uh, which is probably <laughs> what I am these days. But uh, yeah, John McKinnon, uh, for many years, I was itinerant in evangelism and Bible teaching. And, and that was way back to those days, Glenn, when I was doing a lot in the, the schools, the universities. Uh, and they, they were significant times up there in Aberdeen. In fact, I recently conducted a mission uh, in Jerry Street Baptist Church, which used to often be the venue uh, for that event you referred to. Uh, but yeah, so for many years, itinerant, uh, evangelist Bible teacher, working with the churches, equipping, enabling the churches just to reach out more. Uh, uh, always a passion to resource and equip everyday believers. And then uh, 2003 uh, came off the road and went to be uh, the pastor at that time of Calderwood Baptist Church. It was a, a small church at that time and uh, struggling a little bit, uh, but the most wonderful people and a real desire to see God move again uh, in mighty and precious ways. And so for 17 and a half years, uh, I was the pastor there, eventually became the lead pastor because by the grace of God, we we saw a lot of growth. We were able to develop a staff team uh, under God's gracious hand. We were able to uh, replant and be involved in retransitioning uh, the likes of uh, Deniston Baptist and Kilmarnock Baptist and uh, Bell Hill Baptist. And so many of our, many of our listeners uh, within the, the context of our own family would be familiar with some of those places. And then uh, just uh, over, one of the things we were very keen to do at Calderwood was to uh, try and do a good succession ministry, and that's never easy. And so uh, Thomas McNeil uh, was my associate, a great young man, uh, very gifted, and uh, we had the privilege of just uh, working together for about uh, seven, eight years and uh, adjusting and, and enabling uh, Thomas to transition into the role of lead pastor. And I stepped down uh, as lead pastor January 2021 uh, and the 31st of January. And on the 1st of February, I walked into what was maybe one job, but it became came to and I became the director of evangelism for the word one-to-one and a passion for life so there you go it's a uh, it's been a it's been a full uh, life in ministry so you know it could have been much longer but I was trying to trying to give you the highlights that's brilliant thanks John and and I guess it's that those last two roles uh, that uh, had you come along to Canopy uh, just a couple of months ago and share with us and really that's what we're here today for I, I wonder if you would be kind enough uh, to maybe just share two or three of the kind of highlights or key points uh, from the seminar that you shared uh, at Canopy with us. Yeah, certainly, Glenn. It was a real privilege uh, to be at Canopy. Um, the, the main invite there was for the Word One to One and to introduce that as a resource into the life of local churches. But of course, that and a passion for life, which is about that equipping, resourcing, encouraging 
uh, are very uh, close together. I think the reality is that every church has a culture of evangelism, and it's either healthy or unhealthy. And so a, a lot of my ministry really is about trying to add health to the culture of evangelism within the local church. And so the big part of what I was wanting to do at Canopy was actually to enable us as brothers and sisters in Christ to recognize that and then to look at ways in which we can build uh, good principles for uh, evangelism uh, in the life of everyday believers and also great resourcing. And so one of the kind of first principles, very much a part of what I was doing, was the importance uh, of using the scriptures, using the word of God in evangelism. Uh, and, and it seems startling, but the, the number of people whose eyes open, sometimes, we, sometimes we're too apologetics and we can answer big questions, uh, but those questions don't come along uh, every day of the week. Uh, and for me, uh, apologetics is much more about persuasion. Uh, whereas evangelism is much more about proclamation. And I don't mean by that uh, just the proclamation evangelist who might uh, present the gospel clearly in preaching, yeah. but I think also for, for everyday believers just to actually uh, share their faith. Uh, mm. And one of the most powerful ways to do that is to actually use the word of God in the sharing. And so we looked at what it is. Uh, again, we, we know the biblical exhortation, you know, to, to devote ourselves to the word and to prayer. And again, prayer, a big part of canopy, you know, the, 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 the prayer, uh, you know, the plant and the pipeline. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, a big part of it was why use the scripture. And so showing people just the power of the word of God. And then secondly, in that aspect, building on that to show uh, why using a resource like the word one to one uh, is a powerful way for an everyday believer to feel confident in sharing their faith. And uh, th there are other uh, word one to one style of approaches to yep. sharing, uh, you know, the good news of Jesus Christ. But obviously, I serve the ministry, which is the word one to one. Yep. Uh, and, you know, it is the best. Uh, but at the end of the day, <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, I, I was showing people actually how to use it. And of course, the one-one to one, we set ourselves uh, a, a number of simple challenges. Our, our aim is a very simple one that we want to uh, you know, see the church raising up and sending out joyful Bible sharers. And again, you've got to capture that little phrase because we're not seeking to raise up and send out joyful Bible teachers. You know, the good Lord knows we could use more of them. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, we, we want to send out joyful Bible sharers. Uh, and we want to, to enable God's people to have a confidence in the word of God, a confidence in the gospel, and a confidence uh, just to become a loving page turner of God's word hmm. with an unbelieving family member, friend, acquaintance, colleague, neighbor, uh, whatever. Uh, and so the word one-to-one -one is a very powerful way of, of just engaging uh, because you, you you have a copy of uh, we don't you know break open our big study Bible uh, you know we actually uh, have taken John's Gospel broken that down into little bite sized episodes and so I would you know seek to train people just how they can take this and use it and and then uh, doing some little principles on. Uh, you know, in a sense, personal evangelism uh, as part of a passion for life. I was involved in developing uh, a whole suite of personal evangelism training resources for everyday believers to use, for the local church to use in small groups. And they're all available on the websites, which we can chat at the end. Uh, but the in terms of the uh, in terms of that growing confidence, it's just really taking time uh, to let people understand that the power is not in who we are. The power is in the word of God yeah. and God by his Holy Spirit empowers us to share that with others. Yeah. And so I, I spent some time just helping people grow in confidence about inviting a friend, inviting a neighbor, uh, how to go about that, and then beginning the process. And interestingly, if you look at the word one-to-one, -one, I always say to folks, invite people to come and do the first 18 verses. Now, if you actually read with an unbelieving person, the first 18 verses of John's gospel, you actually get introduced to God as creator, uh, the one who made everything, uh, the one who has life and light in himself, the one who can radically transform a life, you know, by a, a personal encounter with him. Uh, he, he's about grace and truth. He's not about rules uh, and that we can know God personally. And, uh, you know, and that's just walking through the first 18 verses with helpful notes. Brilliant. Brilliant. Sounds simple, John. <laughs> well, the, the reality is we want to make it as natural 
is possible, Glenn. And I think uh, none of us find it easy. doesn't matter how often we've shared the faith. None of us find it easy just to take that step and to, to ask a, an unbelieving friend or whatever uh, to come and look at God's word with us. Yeah. Many of, of our friends who don't know Jesus, uh, they would very, very often they've not read the word of God either. They, they think they know the word of God, but they've never looked at it. And one of the powerful strengths of some of the word one to one is you're inviting them just to look at the reliable, authentic witness that we have, and then to just walk through that. And so I often find, as I, as I read with people, it, it is quite surprising when you invite someone uh, to to come and look at just you know uh, some of God's word with them, uh, because when they start to look at it, the, the responses are quite remarkable. I mean, I, I've had people turn to me and say, you know, uh, how did I get to this age in life? And never have looked at this. Yeah. Uh, and the reality is there are many, many people like that. Uh, and so nothing, we, we don't find things simple, but I think this is more natural than we think. Hmm. And if people, if we're in a relationship with people yeah. and they know who we are and what we live for, they've got a genuine interest in us. And, and so I often say to folks, uh, stop trying to be interesting and just be interested. Be interested in those that, you know, that don't know Jesus and just invite them to share life with you uh, and to, you know, spend a lot of time in God's word, you know, because too often we fall into that trap of trying to be interesting, you know, so. <laughs> Absolutely. And th th there's something there as well about the fact that we need to have those relationships with those uh, <laughs> who don't who don't have faith uh, and then having that space to be able to invite them to join us in in uh, opening the the pages of scripture or, or or what have you so um i think there's a lot for us to learn there uh John, yeah uh, in in a passion for life we we actually dedicated five of the the little training videos uh to making loving connections okay uh, just because the, the very point you're making glenn that it's so essential just to help people see uh, that, that, that God has uniquely given them relationships to others. Uh, I'm convinced as part of his divine providence and sovereign plan. And so at the end of the day, uh, you know, we want to help people to see that and help people to see ways in which they can strengthen that. And I, I think many, many years ago, people used to talk about friendship evangelism. And there was a little problem with it. People formed friendships, but never evangelized. Uh, and so I think one of the keys is to actually... Uh, form the friendship uh, and enjoy that and be intentional about that, but look for the opportunity. Uh, and I think the word one-to-one -one gives you a great opportunity to explore uh, the things of Christ together. Brilliant. Uh, just one last question on this, John. Yeah. Does it work? It works very much so. Uh, one, of the, one of the great joys is we've seen this ministry grow. It's now been used in over 60 different countries around the world. Uh, wow. And one of the great things is we have countless stories, uh, not only of people engaging with the scriptures, but of people, you know, coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ as they encounter God in his Brilliant. world. And, uh, you know, I, I baptized even just, uh, you know, a couple of months back, I, I baptized a, a young lad in her own church and I've been reading the word one to one with him. And in that process, he, he came to a living faith. But I have endless stories. Uh, of people across the, the the world, and even during lockdown, many people were doing this online wow. uh, and using the down. You can download all this for free in in, in PDF format and use it in Zoom calls and everything else. Yeah. Uh, but you you can also buy the books from ten of those. But they in do it in a coffee shop, a pub, or whatever the person's yeah. uh, you know comfortable. But uh, during lockdown, we had so many stories of, of people who sat beside folks at a desk every day but didn't pluck up the courage. But then in lockdown, suddenly thought, would you like to look at it? And started looking at the Word of God. <laughs> and a beautiful story a little while back there of a, a young woman reading with uh, her mother. And it's a Chinese uh, person, and she was uh, reading with her mother who's in China. And as they, they, they read the Word of God together over line, her mother came to a living faith wow. in China, uh, wow. led to faith by her daughter. And we've got so many. So yes, yes, it does work. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. And and that builds confidence, right? You know, it, because at some point it, we've all been there where we've tried to share our faith and, and maybe it, it's maybe never happened to you, John, but most, oh, of, <laughs> most, of, most of us have been in that situation where we've tried to share our faith and it just, it, for whatever reason, it just hasn't landed. And so having the confidence that there are materials there that can be 
uh, of aid to us and that the Lord seems to be using uh, mm-hmm. in, yeah. in, and not just around the world, although that is significant and important, but actually in our own land, uh, which at times can feel like hard ground uh, to, to, to work in. So that's really encouraging. Thank you. No, I very much. And it was uh, birthed here. I so you know came uh, out of London initially. I but as you know, I, I've got stories from all over the UK and Ireland. I, you know, most recent one I, I received just the other week was uh, of a situation in, in uh, Ireland, uh, just of a, a person coming to living faith again, just in in reading the word one to one. I've got a young lad from the Philippines who's led people to uh, faith in Christ there. You know, so it's just remarkable the way in which God uh, is taking. Uh, that the, the simplicity of that format and uh, just leading people into a living encounter with himself. Fantastic. Now, John, if people want to go and read some more about this or to learn mm. more about Word One to One uh, or Passion for Life, uh, how, how would they do that? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the websites are a great place to start. Uh, so the word one to one dot com. Uh, so the word one to one dot com, uh, and uh, also for a passion for life, it's just a passion for life dot org dot uk, okay. and uh, of course you can also you'll see the the little books. Uh, in the, so the, in terms of the the word one to one, it's the word and then the numbers one to one dot com, and uh, a passion for life dot org dot uk, and that's probably um, the we'll best. We'll put links way. to those in the yeah. in the show notes below. Absolutely, one of the one of the great things when we're at Canopy. Uh, you know, Martin was talking about a pipeline of leaders for the local church. And one of my hearts is a pipeline of everyday believers yeah. who just grow in confidence yeah. in sharing their faith. Yeah. Uh, and I think uh, this is something that we can do. And so if, if folks visit the website, they would see there that uh, as well as being able to access and download the resources, you just sign up and you can access all those things. It doesn't cost you anything to sign. You can access uh, for free the downloadables. You can order uh, the, the the printed materials. Uh, and again, the same with a passion. Uh, but uh, one of the great things for myself is that we, because it's something that's so good to embed in the, the health of the culture of the evangelism within the local church, we offer, you know, in-person training and things for churches if they want to get, a, you know, mobilised and going. But also I've taken some time just to put up some digital uh, training resources and folks can download and use them in the context of the small groups and various other things. So there, there's plenty there that would resource you. And we also run uh, little online webinars, both for church leaders and for everyday members uh, who want to engage with that on a monthly basis. And, and all that information is there, Glenn. So trying our best just to, to get that out and to, to build that confidence. Brilliant. John, amazing work. Thank you for the way that you serve uh, the churches in our nation. And uh, thanks so much for taking this time uh, to share with us today. And uh, I'm sure lots of folk will be in touch with you and uh, connecting with the work that you're doing. Well, I'm more than happy for that. And in terms of the, the, the emails, are very simple. Just put John in front of any of those addresses <laughs> and, that, and that'll get to me. But yeah, we, we do offer that for the local church, Glenn. And it was a it was a real privilege of canopy actually to have so many of our churches represented. And I know even from that, one or two churches have already been in touch, just looking for training events and, and more than happy uh, to serve some more. So. Brilliant. Well, bless you, John. Thank you for this time. The Lord bless. Thank you, Glenn. God bless you.